Hey guys, Mike from Boyer Bows here. All right, I'm going to show you how I go about tillering the bow. Um, this is my way, and it's the way I've developed after doing so many bows. Um, where I left you guys off last time, for those of you who don't remember, I had just finished the tip overlays, the riser, tip overlay, and the bow is still very heavy, but bending well. I put some just some blue painters tape on here to help you see the bow a little better when it bends. Um, and I've already marked the areas, but let me see if show you what's going on. All right, here we go. I think I'm square with the camera here. All right. Now, I've already looked in the mirror for this, guys, so I know. So watch on the upper limb, watch this part right here. You'll see it stays straight, but kind of leans. It doesn't have a nice bend to it. So watch this area right here. Now, I don't know if you can see that real well, but it seems to me like the middle and upper parts are okay, but this part's not bending well. the lower limb, something different happened. Now, I'm going to show you the lower limb. Uh, I only put the tape on this side, so I'm going to hold it the same way. But first, let's keep your eyes on this area right here. Okay? It's parked near the riser. Okay? To me, that's not bending enough. Looks like the rest of the bow is moving pretty well, but that part isn't. Now, I also want to paint direct your attention to this part right about here, okay? Watch that part as well, just make sure it's in the camera. See, it looks to me like it's curving and then sort of just flattens out. Try to watch the back of the bow here and tell me if you see it. Basically, when I looked at this, and I did that exact same thing, but I did it in a mirror. And I, with my eye, determined that those two are the areas that I'm going to reduce. Now, the way I would do that, let me bring you over here to my little makeshift table here. All right, now the way I would do that, once I determine what area I want to take some wood off the bow, Okay. I mark it up with either a pencil or a sharpie. Now, depending on how much wood I want to remove is also a factor. If you want to remove a decent amount of wood, don't remove too much. But you'll remove more wood if you mark it up with a sharpie, like this, than you will if you use a lead pencil. Why? Because I'm going to take this scraper and I'm going to scrape off my mark. The reason I made a big black triangle here is I want to make sure I take it the same amount of wood off from side to side. I don't want to take more wood off here versus not enough here. It's just a way of gauging what I do. So I'm going to come in here. You know what, why don't I flip this around? I'm going to come in here like this. Make sure you can see that in the camera. Yes, you can. All right. I come in here like this with a scraper, and I'm just going to scrape off the mark. That stiff spot means there's, it's not bending enough, so there's too much wood here compared to below it. So I just scrape it off until I can't see the black marker anymore. Now the black marker is going to absorb into the wood a little bit deeper than will a lead pencil. So to me, that means I'm going to be taking more wood off if I mark it up with a black marker than if I had marked it up with a lead pencil. I know I can get away with this here because I, I know I need to remove more wood than not right now. But as we get, start getting toward the end of the tillering process, I'm going to switch to a lead pencil and, and a scraper, and then I'll go lead pencil and just a sanding block until I get what I want. 
I mean, the best case scenario is I do this and then it's perfect, but that rarely ever happens. All right, so still seeing a little bit of black in the little grooves here, but for the most part, for the most part, I got it. Okay. Then, all right, I don't see it offhand, but I would come in with a sanding block and just smooth that out. Now, I also have those two spots marked on this bow, this on this side of the limb, and I'll be doing that in a little bit. But let me show you how I used to do it. This go hickey setup I have here is a tillering stick. And a, I put a bow in the tillering stick, just another one I'm working on. And let me come around to this side. Well, here's the, uh, you see the bow is sitting in like a fork. And you got these notches in it down to a base, which I have C clamped onto a board. And I've got the numeric draw lengths on every notch. They go about every two inches on an odd number. I don't know. It's just how it worked out. All right. So what I would do in this case, I'll put this over here. Get it all in the all in the picture here. There. Okay. So what I would do here is basically I would bend the bow, we'll bend the bow, give it a stretch, it's getting caught in the notches here, I'd bend, bend, and then give it a good bend whenever I felt I was ready. Now we got the start of a decent bend here. Then what I would do is come in with this little go hickey here. Now what this is, right here, this is a three inch block. It's a piece of uh, babinga that I had left over. And what I did was I drilled the hole just about almost all the way through. And then I took a wood screw and I screwed it in until just the tippy, tippy tip was sticking out. Okay? And then I glued it in there. Now you see, I don't know if you can really tell, but that is just barely out. Now what that's going to do for me... is you got your thing, you kind of, it looks pretty good, right? So then what you do is you run it over your bent limb. Just like this. And where it is stiff, it's going to be straight. Now, obviously, if I ran it on the board like this, it would just, it makes a big cut in the board, because it's flat. Flat with the screw sticking down will make a cut. A curve, the screw won't touch the wood. So if it's bent well, or if there's a hinge, it won't touch the wood there. But if it's stiff, it straightens out. That sounded bad, but you get my, you get the idea. Get your minds out of the gutter. So you run it along the bow, the belly of the bow like this. And then when you look, you'll see where those scratches are on your bow, and that'll tell you where the bow is stiff. And you'll see empty spots where either the bow is bending properly or bending too much, and you can if you've got a scratch, empty space and scratch, you got a hinge here, so you've got to reduce the wood where the scratches are. If you've got a scratch and then no scratch the rest of the way, you've got a stiff spot here and you just have to reduce it here, you can leave the rest alone. That's basically how I learned. And then you can step back and look at the bow, make sure you look at it from both sides in case there's any twist. But that's basically my setup on how I learned how to tiller with a tillering stick. And you just keep doing that on every uh, at every stand point in your in the process of tillering until you're at the length you want. Now, another way, another thing is if your if your bow is bending symmetrically, you decide that the the tiller is perfect, but the bow's too heavy. A good way to make sure that you're taking the same amount of, to reduce each limb equally, is to mark from wherever you want to reduce the bow. See, I always go a little bit past the riser and a little bit before the tip, and I would mark the entire bow in this black like this and then scrape it off. 
and do the same thing on this side. That way I know I'm taking, or sand it off, either one. And that way I know I'd be taking the same amount of wood off of this side as I am this side while um, just reducing the overall draw weight of the bow while not reducing necessarily or screwing up the tiller because I'm reducing the same amount of the wood uniformly down the length of the bow. And that, guys, is how I tiller the bow two ways. I really don't use the tillering stick anymore. I find it's kind of a crutch, at least for me. I, t I tend to be a perfectionist when it comes to tiller. So I'll be like, oh, it's just off a little bit there, and then I'll take a little bit off. Oh, it's off a little bit there, and then I'll take it off. It's, it's too much. I'd rather just look in the mirror, and if it looks right, it is right, and end the, end the game right there. All right, well, that's tillering, guys. That's where you need to do, where you need to be. We want you now, when I see you next time, this bow will be in tiller. And once it's in tiller, and is that the weight you like? Let's say I would start getting it into tiller first. Why? Because you could easily miss your draw weight if you don't, if you start reducing wood and reducing and then tiller the wood, you could go past your draw weight. If you get it into tiller, or bending symmetrically and smoothly and uniformly down each limb, and then getting the limbs in, in unison, now you just reduce wood equally on each side and it should stay in the tiller. You may have to tweak it a little bit, but it should stay more or less in tiller at that point. And once you're done with that, guys, you just take it out to draw weight and draw length, and the bow's done. So I'm going to get this bow tillered, and then uh, we'll come back and we'll see what's left over. All right, that's Mike from Boyer Bows, tillering two ways.